For your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Frank and Hearn at Universal Adjustment, Johnny. Oh, hi. How are you, Frank? Yeah, a little worried at the moment. Can you help me out? Well, that depends on what I have to do. You have to take a little trip for one thing. A farm near Lexington, Kentucky. Well, it's a slow time of the year to get out in the country. What else? Talk to a man named Calcor there. He had a raise for us that insured the $65,000. I hate to have to pay the premium on that kind of policy. Well, that's just it, Johnny. Got a wire on my desk here from a man in Calcor's business office. The horse was seriously injured and had to be destroyed. Well, no wonder you're worried, Frank. I'll be right over. John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yes, truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> While we take a breather from our program, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you know who Uncle Sam's lawyer is? If your answer is the Attorney General, you're absolutely right. But being legal advisor to the President and other governmental agencies is only part of his job. His main task is running the Department of Justice, which makes sure that the laws passed by Congress are carried out, and that lawyers are available when the government must be represented in court. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is some question concerning the amount or kind of tax you should pay, or suppose you and the government don't agree as to which of you own certain land. That's when the Department of Justice steps in to represent the government side of the case. If anyone is brought to trial for counterfeiting, smuggling, gold hoarding, or passport forging, the Department of Justice prosecutes the case. It also handles all matters dealing with legal immigration. And all of this activity is the responsibility of an important member of the President's Cabinet, the Attorney General. Just as it is the duty of the United States government to protect each and every one of you, it is the duty of the Attorney General to protect the government of the United States. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Insurance Adjusters, Suite 814, Kittridge Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Oklahoma Red Matter. Expense account item one, $107.80. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Lexington. Item two, $5 and a half. Transportation from the airport to the Great Southern Hotel. I checked in and changed clothes. Then to an address on Keith Avenue, Calgar and Company, Incorporated. Mr. Calgar is never here, Mr. Dollar. Spent all of his time at the farm. You'll, you'll have to see him there. Or maybe I won't have to bother him at all. How about Mr. Monroe? Mr. Monroe isn't with Mr. Calgar's office anymore. Well, that's funny. He was yesterday afternoon when he sent my company this wire about the policy. We and Mr. Calgar uh, ended, please. I, I might as well tell you. Oh, well, is there anybody else around here I can talk to about this? I, I think you'll have to see Mr. Calgore. Expense account item A phone call to the Calgore farm is disclosed that Mr. Calgore was out for the day. Another half hour of conversation in the office, and the reluctant clerk finally gave me a name and an address. He was a tall, lanky man who never took his hat off. Dr. Pierce, veterinarian. Now, it ain't home red, huh? Uh. The people who wrote policy sent me down from Hartford. Is there something wrong? No. Matter of procedure, Doctor. Mr. Calgore's office has filed claim for a $65,000 indemnity. Apparently, Mr. Monroe, who handled these things for Mr. Calgore, is no longer with him. Mm. Yes, I understood the call. And Mr. Calgore is not around at the moment. I don't get it. If Lloyd Calgore has been down that much in terms, he's got a right to file claim for it. Just good business to get the facts, that's all. You uh, treated him? Yes. Yeah. The wire said something about a piece of machinery. A tractor with a blade. Uh, Red rub back into it. Hard. Cut through his right hand string all the way to the bone. You make out a report in a case like this? In any case. The man was just like it, hmm? Only had my eye to get there to hurt it sometimes. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh. Most of the tenders were cut, huh? 
Well, it when said it was rapid. Uh-oh. Yeah. This notation about the carcass, cremated on the premises. Why so fast? Well, they want to get that way. Well, then it makes my job a little more complicated. Unless you took some x-rays. There's a new need to. Well, if you said that, you fell into the time I got there. What are you reading for? Proof that the injury occurred more than anything else. Mr. Calgar called you right after it happened, did he? That's right. I got there maybe ten minutes later. Lloyd was alone with the horse. The minute I laid eyes on that animal, I knew. Hmm. And you advised Mr. Calgar he had to be destroyed? I didn't have any choice. Did you consider calling in another vet? No, oh, you soon, man. Did Mr. Calgar ask you to call in another vet? No, Mr. Dollar. He took my word for it. Why don't you? Part of my job, Dr. Pierce. Hmm? I can't take anybody's word for anything. <laughs> Expense account item three, 30 cents, for the five airmail stamps who took to mail a copy of the complete injury report to a veterinarian service in Cleveland. Item four, $25, car rental. That afternoon, I drove out to the Calgore breeding farm. Like most of the others I'd passed, it was complete with white fences, rolling hills, blue grass, and a stately colonial residence, just like the movies. A sullen, attractive girl in her early 20s met me at the door. I told her my name and who I wanted to see. You're not insurance sure me. You heard about Red. Well, what happened to him, aren't you? That's right. I'm Mr. Calgo. I'm glad to know you. How much did Daddy have Red insured for? $65,000. I don't know whether I'm supposed to discuss this with you, Miss Calgo. If Red had gotten on the tracks this year, he'd have doubled that, tripled the problem. There's not enough money in the world to accept that horse. He's a great horse. He must have been. I'm sorry this happened. God couldn't have stopped Red. Oh, I understand he was injured beyond hope. That's a lie. What's that? Brad couldn't have fought him. He just couldn't have done it. Brad was the only thing around his whole place worth anything. It wasn't the horse injured? That's what they'll all tell you. But I can tell you something you, else. What are you talking about, anyhow? It was a terrible thing to do. Go to your room. It was just like murder, and you know it. You did? It was murder. Stop it. <laughs> Any time I've ever had to shoot a horse around here, she gets like that. And that way ever since she was a little girl. I see. I knew I'd have to put up with a reaction like that. But I'm reluctant to apologize to you for her action. Ed Pierce told me you were in to see him. I wish he hadn't. I intended to tell you myself, Mr. Chargo. If I've offended you, I'm sorry for it. And you look like I'm doing something shady. You could have come to me instead of going to him. I tried to. We have to go to everybody. Dr. Pierce ordered the horse destroyed. Seemed like a fair opening to go to him and ask why. What do you want from me? All the information you can give me about the accident. Now, no matter what you think of me or my methods, I'm the man assigned to this case. This report has to be complete before your claim can be paid. You always handle a case this way. Well, that's the way I'm handling this one. They don't know what they're doing sending a man like you here. You filed a claim by wire, what did you expect? That fool Moss, Monroe, filed the claim. I'd have waited until things around here calmed down a little. Is that why you fired him? That's one reason. Are you here to accuse me of something? Look, there's $65,000 at stake here. We'll pay it out when we're satisfied all the circumstances were proper and not before. I'm not afraid of you, Dollar, or your insurance company. I don't like your snooping around my office talking to my friends about me. No man would. If I don't get my information from you, I'll get it somewhere else. What I've seen of you so far and what information I have got hasn't been in your favor. I don't like that kind of talk. You don't seem to like anything about this. Now, how about it? Do we keep this up, or do we get down to business? The trainer was bringing Red back from his exercise. Outside the stall, Red got scared. A mouse or something, but he reared back into that blade. When Doc got here, he said Red didn't have a chance, so I shot him, that's all. It's Trenner. What's his name? Jim Knight. He isn't around anymore. I fired him right then and there. Told him to get off my property. Who else is there? No one. The rest of them were up the house having dinner. Oh, fine. How about right afterwards? I just called out to Pierce. We handled it. And better if you'd left the remains for us to examine. Dollar, I got maybe 150 head on this farm. Now and then accidents happen. If one of my stock is dead, I get rid of it as fast as I can. That's the way I operate. Oh. Where can I get in touch with Jim Knight? Where did he go? I don't know. He took the things and cleared out as fast as he could. He knew better than to hang around here. What do you mean by that? What I said, he knew better. That's what I mean. Did your daughter see any of this? Lucy. 
You mean those crazy things you were saying when I walked into the room? And here are the crazy circumstances, what you were saying might be worth listening to. Pipe three. I'd like to talk to her just the same. Abbott! Abbott! Just a second, come you can talk to anybody you like, Dollar. You've already got all the information you're going to get from me. Just a minute, Charlie. Yes, sir. Show him out. Uh, this way, sir. Never mind. I can find my own way. When I left Lloyd Calgore, I wasn't sure whether I'd talk to a trained man or not. Calgore's belligerent attitude seemed to permeate the whole farm. The horse handlers I talked to were grumbling and complaining, and I was able to learn nothing from them except a Baltimore address for Jim Knight. However, I did talk to Lucy Calgore again, down by the stables. I thought you left a long time ago. I wanted to talk to you before I did. What about, Mr. Dollar? Your business is with my dad, not with me. Well, pardon me if I seem to confuse you. Earlier today, you were very anxious to tell me something. Was I? Yes, you were. What is this, anyhow? I wish we hadn't met at all. But we did. And you said there was no need to destroy the horse after it had been injured. Did you mean the horse could have been saved? Did you have a reason for saying something like that? I've... I've just been very upset lately. All of us around here have. Yeah, I'm getting that way myself. That was the best horse we've had in the stables in five years. We've all been counting on him since he was a colt. Only this stupid thing happened that just turned all of us upside down. Is that your explanation for the things you said to me? Yes, for the moment. Please don't ask me any more questions right now. The Calgars were turning out to be a dandy pair to deal with. Back in town, I checked on Calgars' financial situation. It was good, as far as the local banks were concerned. Expense account item five, two dollars and twenty cents, telegram. One to Hartford requesting further information regarding Calgore's credit standing. The other to Baltimore, Maryland, addressed to Jim Knight. The next morning, I received an answer to the latter. Johnny Dollar. Baltimore, Maryland. Calling Mr. Dollar. You want to hold on? Sure. Ready here with your call to Mexico. Go ahead. Oh, Hello? 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 Is this Mr. Dollar? The man who sent the telegram? Yes. Who's this? I'm Jimmy Knight's mother. The wire said it was important for him to get in touch with you. I thought I'd better call and tell you where you could reach him. Well, that's very kind. Now, he's at the Pal Door Farm near Lexington. You can reach him there through Mr. Lawrence. Wait a minute. He left there three days ago, Mrs. Knight. Didn't he come home? Why, no. Why, are you sure he isn't at the Pal Door place? I'm positive. Do you have any other ideas where he could be? No. But this doesn't sound like him, Mr. Dollar. He wouldn't just go off without letting me know about it. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. He's my son. Maybe there's something wrong. Yeah. Maybe there is. <laughs> John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. When I talked to Jim Knight's mother in Baltimore, the Calgar claim was just about out of draw. I had a strong suspicion that the death of the horse had not occurred as reported. On the other hand, I had found no apparent reason for Calgore to do away with an animal that was evidently more valuable than the insurance had carried. It came down again to searching for the only other witness, Jim Knight. I promised his mother I'd have him contact her if I found him anywhere around Lexington. But that didn't seem likely after re-questioning several people at the Calgore farm. Now, this is where Mr. Knight stayed all the time he was here, Mr. Dollar. Uh-huh. You can see for yourself it's all cleared out. Not a stitch left. Did you happen to see him leave? No, sir. Right after the accident, he's gone. Just like that. I wonder if any of the others saw him. We talked about that. Nobody saw him, though. Did he have a car? No, sir. Well, he had to have a suitcase or two. 
How do you suppose he got away from here, then? Adam, him, I guess. I don't know. He could have lugged him out to the road and flagged himself around or waited for the bus. Maybe someone drove him? Miss Lucy might have said. He drove Mr. Knight around now and then. That business you were telling me about before will have to be looked into, Lucy. Who's that? Because you intimated that your father and Dr. Pierce might be lying about the whole thing. You realize that if there's any truth to that, your father would be liable to criminal charges. I know. I was just trying to put Dad in a bad light. Well, he's not in a very good one right now. It was just a spike in my family, too. Dad and I have been arguing for weeks now. And when I walked in the door yesterday, you saw a way to get back at him, is it? Something like that. Is uh, that Oklahoma Red up there? Mm-hmm. I took the picture myself. Well, I'm no horseman, but he looks like a lot of horse. He was. You know that the worst broken down plug who ever could a drunk wagon has more dignity than any man who ever lived? Well, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> What's the trouble between you and your father? A man named Jim Knight. Used to work here as a trainer. Yeah, I heard. I was going to ask you about him. Yes, I thought so much. Jim and I saw quite a bit of each other in. Dad never liked that. Why? Well, I suppose because I'm all he has left. Mother and Bob, he was my older brother. They were killed in an accident a few years ago. Dad had been looking for an excuse to get rid of Jim. Your father doesn't strike me as the kind of man who has to give an excuse to fire someone he didn't like. He was mad. What? <sighs> Nothing. Jim was a good trainer. Very good with Red. Much important. When the accident happened, I can imagine what Dad had to say to him when he fired him. You know where I can find him now? No. He didn't say a word to me when he left. That isn't about it. Lucy, you suppose your father will ever calm down enough so I can talk to him? I don't know. The Calgary's have always been a terribly angry bunch of people. Very emotional. There doesn't seem to be much of a letter these days. Is that what you meant when you asked me if I thought he was mad? I suppose so. It's almost as if he's on the verge of something lately, something desperate. His mood frightens me sometimes. I didn't used to. You know, I was thinking. A couple of years ago, Daddy bought a new car. We were out driving one day and something went wrong. Well, he was so angry, he just smashed it into a cement wall and left it. Lucy, tell me about Jim Knight. I was in love with him from the first day he came to work here. I still am. That's all it is to say. I saw Lucy Calgar again the following afternoon when I returned to talk with her father. He told me he was gone and wouldn't be back until evening. I spent some more time with the people on the farm, trying to find out anything that would help. But nothing did. That night, when I picked up my key at the hotel desk, there was a message to call Operator 18 in Hartford. It was Frank Ahern. Now, though, I've got a very good rating. We've done it fast. It doesn't money. Well, then that angle is practically out, Frank. There's just no reason for him to kill that animal that I can think of. How about the other? No one seems to know what happened to Jim Knight. This far we go, John? Somehow I feel there's more to it. What it is, I don't know, Frank. The suit thing. Well, how about going to the police and asking them to help you locate Knight? Something just occurred to me, Frank. What? Eldor hasn't threatened to go to the insurance commission or the sewers yet. Oh, that's usually pretty standard with a man like that. Yeah, it is. If he's got a just claim. <laughs> I just talked to my office in Hartford, Dr. Pierce. They aren't very happy with the way this case has been going. You think so? They're about ready to close it and call me home. Oh, you mean they'll pay you the claim? No. I don't mean that at all. Hmm? Look, Doctor. I spent some time checking you out because you're one of the parties who can help settle this thing. You've been in practice around Lexington for 32 years. 
People think a lot of you. And they take my word. Well, I what? don't. I can't. I'd hate to see a nice guy like you get the book. I think I can stop it if you'll cooperate. The book? What do you mean? Forget I'm an insurance investigator. I'm just a guy giving you some information. When I said my adjustment company is ready to close the case, I mean that Calgore will have to sue for a settlement. And court will have to produce Jim Knight and prove his story. With what we have so far, he'll lose the suit, and the insurance company will file charges against him for attempting to defraud. And they won't fool around. There's more of it tougher than an insurance company when somebody's trying to cheat him. And, uh, you'll have to be in court, too. No. You see what I mean? Yes. Well, how about it? I've been here 18 years. And he asked you to lie for him. That's understandable to me. But in a court, it's perjury. False testimony. What do you do to That's up to the company. I'll have to hear your part of the first. Oklahoma Red was dead when I got there. He hadn't been in any action. Lloyd made me promise to tell you that. Lloyd just shot him. Just shot him? Why? Well, Red wasn't the horse Lloyd thought he was. Great confirmation that he just wouldn't run. Lloyd got the mortar shot. And my thought, that it? Yes. Lloyd probably didn't remember. Go with it. I don't know. He's losing his mind, I think. I've heard that about him before. From who? Lucy? Yeah. He's had a reason. I got to I've known time, boy. Expense account item six, thirty-five cents. I lost it on a payphone trying to get in touch with Calgore. No one answered, so I drove out. Somebody, open up. Uh, Mr. Dollar, sir. Good evening. Hello, Abbott. Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Dollar, maybe this ain't such a good time to be coming around. Is Mr. Calgar back yet? Yes, sir, he is. But I'd uh, like to see him. Uh, Mr. Dollar, please. Hi, I... Abbott. You're going ahead. All right, Mr. Hello, Johnny. That's not a very good news. Neither am I. Hey, you've been crying. What's this? Oh, there, there now. Oh, I'm very happy. Take your hands off her. What? I said take your hands off her. I'll kill you. Oh, what's the I'll kill you. 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 I'll I'll get a doctor. No, I'm... Where'd he go? I don't know. What's that mean? Johnny, did you hear? About killing someone else? Who was talking about? Damn. sheriff's office and then took a look around the ground. All the cars were still in the garages. Then I heard some sort of disturbance near the stables. Don't come any closer. I've got a shotgun here. I got a gun too. Go away from here. The police will be here any minute. This won't do you any good. Shout off. Be better if you're in the house ready to make a statement. Dr. Pierce told me he lied for you. And you said you'd killed someone. Was it Jim Knight? I told you to go away from here. You'd better come out. I'm going to pay the whole bunch of you. 
Don't do anything foolish. We didn't have to do it this way, Caldor. Like so. Nice boat. Under the floor. All these things we did. We know about red. I know. Nice tried to stop him. But that was crazy. I'm not, am I, Dollar? Take it easy. I'm not crazy. Well, that's that. Expense account item seven, thirty-seven dollars and a half, miscellaneous. Item eight, same as one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, two hundred eighty-six dollars and forty-five cents. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs>